It's good and know that it's good. God is God. Hallelujah. Once again, we want to invite each and every one that has joined us live this morning. And we believe that the word that God has for you is a now time word. Amen. It is to instruct you. It is to deliver you and bring you into that place that God has for you. So I'm going to take you to the book of wisdom this morning. How many know that's Proverbs? Amen. We're going to Proverbs this morning. And I was trying to debate on which one. So we're going to Proverbs chapter 30. And I believe that as we begin to read this, uh, you will understand why it is so important that we, we gain great wisdom through the Word of God and instruction on family values. Amen. Amen. There's a breakdown in family values today. On, and we understand this. When we look out and we see the protests that's taking place and those that are hollering we are, Hamas and all this, understand this right here. There is an evil force that wants to separate and divide the family. And so we've, even seen, we've seen young people whose parents are in high up in our government and they're out there protesting and saying, we are Hamas. But yet we hear their parents saying, we are Hamas. And here in America, I've said this right here. The enemy that we're fighting right now has infiltrated our youth. It's infiltrated our colleges. It's infiltrated our schools. Amen. And I've shared this many times. We heard that one time uh, that Khrushchev made a statement. And this was during the time of the Cold War. He said, you'll not defeat America with guns or atomic bombs. He said, you're not going to defeat them that way. But if you will invade their schools, if you'll invade their colleges, if you'll invade their homes, he said, and turn their youth against the parents, he said, America will implode without one uh, shot being fired. Amen. But what he didn't realize was there's still a church that serves an almighty God. There's still a church that believes, amen, in the authority in the family. So this morning, if you'll stand with me, amen, on uh, Proverbs chapter 30, starting with verse 11. There is a generation that curses their father and does not bless their mother. There's a generation that appear in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their own filthiness. There's a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes, and their eyelids are lifted up. There's a generation whose teeth are as swords, and their jaw teeth as knives, to devour the poor from off the earth, and the needy from among men. The horse leech have two daughters crying, give, give. There are three things, listen to this, there are three things that are never satisfied, yes, Four things say not. It is enough. The grave, the barren womb, the earth that is not filled with water, and the fire that saith, it, saith not, it is enough. The eye that mocketh at his father and despises to obey his mother, the ravens of the valley shall pluck them out, and the young eagle shall eat it. He said, there be three things which are too wonderful for me, yes, four which I know not. The way of the eagle in the air, and the way of the serpent upon a rock, the way of a ship in the midst of the sea, and the way of a man with a maid. Wow. Such wow. is the way, he said, of an adulterous woman. She eateth and wipeth her mouth and saith, I have done no wickedness. For three things the earth is disquieted, and four, four which it cannot bear. For a servant when he reigneth, and a fool when he is filled with meat. And for a audience the woman when she is married, and a handmaiden that is heir to her mistress. There are four things, he said, which are little upon the earth. Listen to this. He said, but they are exceedingly, exceeding wise. The ant are a people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. The, he said, the coins which are, he said, uh, are but feeble folk, yet... Make they their house in the rocks. The locusts have no king, yet they go forth all of them by bands or by an army. The spider taketh hold with her hands and is in king's palaces. There be three things which go well, yea, four, are coming, he said, comely and going. A lion which, he said, is strongest among beasts and turneth not away for any. 
a greyhound and he goat also, and a king against whom there is no rising up. You may be seated. When I begin to read this right here, it is a scripture that tells us, amen, that there are, there are certain things, amen, that will never be enough. I've said this. I said, when you begin to look and you begin to see what is happening today, there is an evil force that is saying that, listen, we have not gained enough ground. There is an evil force that says we have not taken enough youth in suicide. There's a, there's a force that says, listen, there's not enough fentanyl, there's not enough spice, there's not enough lean molly, there's not enough out here. And said so we need more. We need every young person in America, to, we need them to die. And we find out it does not matter how much drugs are being brought across the border. It does not matter how many are out on the streets. They always say it's not enough. And we understand this right here. In the house of God, we come. And we know this right here. That God says, I'll tell you what's enough. Where two or more are gathered together in my name. He said, that is enough. I can move in your city. I can move in your nation. I can move in your state. He said, when you come together and you begin to call out my name, I can move against the drug dealers. I can move against, he said, that which is trying to destroy. And we look around today and we ask ourselves this question right here. We ask this and we say, listen, do I have enough of God in me? And if you say yes, I say, listen. Uh-oh. You're in trouble. Yes, sir. Because I need more of him and less of him. Amen. Amen. Are, you, are you half full, amen, of the Holy Spirit? Or are you half empty? I've said this right here. I don't want to be half full. I don't want to be half empty. Amen. I want to be, I want to be full of the Holy Spirit. I want to be full of the Word. I want to be full, amen, of the truth that comes through the gospel of his Word. I, I've been hearing this so many times. And, and you know, you, you don't even want to turn on the news anymore. It's always death and destruction. And we look around and here in Colleen, the murder rate is higher than it's ever been in the history that I have lived here in Texas. Why is that? Because we see that hell has unleashed its demons. We see that right now, the demons that used to play around, the church, was, they were serving the Holy Spirit. They were coming, they were praying together, standing together, loving together. They were in unity together. But somehow or another, the enemy got hold of them. Somehow the enemy said, listen, you don't have to go to church. You don't have to praise. You don't need to read your Bible. Listen, to the enemy said this right here. You got better things to do. So what the church did was say this right here. You know, I, I don't need to go to church. I'm going to mow my yard today while it rains, so don't worry about that one. Amen. Well, I've got to wash my car. Don't worry about that. It rains. It's going to get muddy. Amen. So why not come to the house of God, get in some praise. Why not come get in some instruction, amen, that you can begin to say, I'm going to tell you what God hates, amen. I'm going to tell you the evilness of man mind and how it operates yes, so that when I begin to hear it, it drives me into prayer. Yes. It drives me, oh, amen, yeah. into a ah. place where I'm coming and saying, you know what? I want to fast over this. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't have to have, amen, the Holy Spirit say fast over evil. I don't have to have that. I don't have to have the, the, the uh, Holy Spirit tell me fast over, amen, the evilness in the schools and everything else. Amen. No. Why? Because we have knowledge of God's word. Yeah. And we know that in this right here, amen, that if we don't reach the generation today, the generation is going to reach another generation, another generation. Evil will multiply. And so we at the church come together. I was preaching a message one Sunday. This has been several years back. And I brought up, I brought up about spice. Does anybody know what spice is? Okay, we've got a few. The rest of you will talk to you later. But anyway, I was talking about spice, and, and, and I was talking about the different, you know, uh, they had the different uh, uh, ones in it, and one was called Diablo, the devil. Yeah. Yeah. And this individual came up after the service and said, you know, I, I played around. So I played around with spice, and I got some of that Diablo, and said, I thought I was going to die. My heart was racing, so I fell back against the wall, and I began to say, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Said, don't let me die like this right here. Said, I thought it was just kind of fun and games, but it, it, it almost killed me. Yes, sir. And said, if I, if you deliver me from this, I'll never, I will never do this again. I said, why did you even try it? Diablo is the devil. I said, why did you even try it? Everybody said it was just kind of nice, high, make you feel good, and everything else. And she said, I thought I was going to die. My heart raced so bad, she already had a bad heart anyway, and everything else. And I said, you know, it did exactly what it was supposed to, try to kill you. 
Amen. And we in the church, what's happening is we have we've been getting we've been preaching this prosperity message. I believe this right here when I got saved. Amen. I got the prosperity of the word of God and the promise of his word is amen. Hallelujah. I don't have to go and say, Oh God, I want you to touch my finances. God's already touched them. God, I need you to touch my health. He says, I've already touched your health. He says, but really what I need to do is I need to touch your hand and your mouth. Come on, somebody, amen. Hallelujah. And so with this right here, I begin, I begin to pray and I said, God, we have the word. We have the wisdom there, but we have to apply it. And so as I was preaching this right here, this uh, another mother came up and I, that Sunday I said, listen, your, your, your children have no privacy in your home. No. That's my house. That's my food. Those are my clothes you wear. I, I, I bought them. I paid for them. That car you want to drive and go out, guess what? I decide whether you drive it or not. Amen. Come on, don't look me all funny. Amen. I said, listen, if I decide I'm going in your room, flip your mattress over and go through your stuff and look, see, I'm doing it because I want you to live and not die. Amen. I want to make sure the enemy has not already got a hold on you. She said, I went home. She said, I went in and, my, and said, my son told me, no, you can't go in here. This is my privacy. She said, she told him, said, your privacy is out there in the backyard. She went through his room. She found drugs. She found paraphernalia. She found some Playboy and she found some other stuff. And she came back and she said, my God, I had no idea this was going on in my, in my child's room. She said, but let me tell you something. When I got through, it was clean. She said, my son is not going to die, amen, because some dude down there on the sidewalk, amen, is giving them all of this drugs and everything, trying to lead them on. And then we'll be the one responsible when they're dead. Say, I didn't have nothing to do with it. Come on, church. Amen. we got to get the word out. Hallelujah. It's hard to live. It is easy to die. Anybody can die. It's hard to live. Amen. Hallelujah. Any old dead fish can float down the street. But how many know when the salmon running, they're getting ready to go spawn. They got to fight those rapids. They got to fight those bears. They got to fight those yeah. fishermen. They got to fight all this and they finally get through. And then what happens is they deposit a blessing, amen. And now that comes a spawn of more fish. But not everyone made it. Not everyone had that drive and that fight in there. We're in a time right now. You got to, amen, come on, you got to have some spiritual drive. You got to have some spiritual fight, amen. It is a sad thing when you're in store, in the store, you see a four-year-old that is cussing his mama out. I've told this. I was in the store and that boy cussing his mama. I walked around there and she didn't see me. She had her back turned. I walked around and I went, <laughs> She's like, what happened? Yes. I walked back around and started again. I walked right on back around there again. I put that eye on me. This woman behind me, she said, Whoo! She said, I'll take you home with me. <laughs> wow, we gotta get authority back in the house, amen. Hallelujah. You gotta have that look that when you come and say, not in my house, not on my time, amen. You're not doing this stuff here, amen. You know what? God is greater in me than any demon devil out there that wants to destroy my family. So I'm going to make a stand, amen. And as of right now, I become your drill sergeant. Amen, Bishop. My kids will tell you, until they, till they left home, amen, I was their drill sergeant. And they were like, Dad, but you don't understand. I said, understand one thing. You're going to live and not die. You're not going to go out there to that party. You know why? Because I know who's out there. I know they're going to have drugs out there. They got date rape out there. I know they got all this right here. And my daughter, I told them, you're not going. I said, you'll thank me later. And your life today. Amen. Come on, somebody. We go to church, come by and yell. We just go here, sing some songs, we go home. And guess what? The youth are still doing what they've been doing. We got parents who are still, amen, out there that are arguing, fighting, and having all these problems. We got them coming against the police department. We got them coming against the, our military. We got them coming against our government. And I'm saying, who, who's, the, who's the parent here? Amen. I remember a time you walk in church. I don't care if you out there in the gang. I don't care if you're in the government. You walk in the church and it was an honor. Yes, sir. 
There was a, let me take my hat off. Yes, sir. We come in silent yes, sir. because we could feel that there was a holiness. Amen. 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 But listen, we've strayed from holiness. We've, we've come to the place today where youth are seeing in the church that adults, I do what I want. I sit where I want. I say what I want. Amen? Instead of coming in and saying, Lord, I come in to humble myself. I come in to praise you. I come in because you're all authority. I come in and, and I know I'm going to bow down at your feet. If you tell me to sit down, I'm going to sit down. If you tell me to usher, I'm going to usher. If you tell me, whatever you tell me, Lord, that's what I'm going to do. Because I am a man under authority. Hallelujah. If you're not under authority, then understand this right here. You are under rebellion. And rebellion will destroy you. It will take everything from you. Wow. Let me give you some scriptures. This, I'm just giving you the word. Psalms 34 and verse 11. Listen to this. Come ye children, listen unto me. I will teach you the fear or the respect of the Lord. The writer says, children, I need you. You're going to be the next generation. You're going to be the next congressmen and women and senators. And you're going to be the next judges. You're going to be the next doctors. You're going to be the next lawyers. You're going to be the next pastors. You're going to be the next missionaries. You're going to be the next deacon and deaconess. You're going to be all these right here. And so what I want to do, I want to get you on the right road. Amen. I know over here they're trying to pull you over here on the side road. But understand this, a side road has a lot of stops, amen. On, if I can get you over here on this road, amen, it's a straight road. It is straight and narrow. Hallelujah. And there's gonna be a, there's not going to be many on it. You don't have to worry about a traffic jam. No. That's the highway of holiness, there be few that walk upon it, amen. That means you can go, amen. Hallelujah. There's not going to be no traffic jam because everybody's going the same direction, speaking the same words, serving the same king, amen. Hallelujah. Under the same authority. But on the side road, they'll cut you off. Yes, they will. On the side road, they'll tell you, hey, amen, you're not going fast enough. I mean, come on, on the side road, you that's where all of a sudden you have road rage and, and somebody get mad and they want to pop off some rounds at you and, you know, just show you, hey, I'm going to tell you who I am. And, and so, but when you get on the highway of holiness, come on now. Come on. It says, no evil beast shall be there upon, amen. Hallelujah. So come let me teach you, children. Let me teach you the way of the Lord. Because I know what you're hearing at home. I know what you're seeing in school. I know with all this right here that you're being told this is all right. But I want to tell you something. It's not all right. Going against a man, the, the government, going against the word, going against authority. Amen. This is rebellion. Come on. Several years ago, there was a there was a protest turned into a riot that was taking place. And how many know the cameras are out there and they're panning? Well, guess what? Don't ever make a black mama mad. That's right. Oh. I'm just telling you like it is. Anybody know what I'm talking about? She said, oh. She said, oh, H no. She said, that is my boy. He got a mask on his face, but I know his eyes. I know that's my boy. She got up, went down there, and jerked the mask off him, grabbed him by the ear, drug him out. And I mean, she's slapping him and everything. He's like, Mama, stop. And Mama said, no, 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 no. And when she got him home, it wasn't just Mama. It was the uncle. It was the brother. Come on, you know how a black family do Oh, you're going to get beat so many times when you get out of here, amen. They're not even going to recognize who you are. The next day, she has him in front of CNN or one of the cameras there. He's apologizing to the nation for embarrassing his mama. And I can see his mama probably back here behind the camera. Yeah, just go ahead. Say one stupid word. You just go ahead because I'm going to tell you something right now. We all lined up right here and you're not going to make it home. He went ahead. He apologized. He got his head on right. He, he started going to college. He's doing good today. And this is what he said. Because of my mama's authority and because of what she did, he said, I didn't fall to rebellion. I didn't fall to drugs. I didn't fall to all this. 
And he said, you know, I could have been shot. I could have been killed there. Yeah. But my mama came uh -huh. because I didn't have a daddy. Yeah. Come on, church. Come, on. Come children. Listen unto me and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 1. Listen. The Proverbs of Solomon, this is what he said. A wise son maketh a glad father. But a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. That my boy. <laughs> He's doing good. Yes, sir. Or the mama said, I don't know what I'm going to do with that child. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I don't know what I'm going to do with that child. I've done everything. Oh, Lord, you know, I, I remember hearing this so many times. Oh, you don't know the pain I went through birthing you. Oh, I gave up. I'm saying, no, just go ahead and tell him if you don't shut up. Mm -hmm. Oh, I shouldn't say that's a bad word. <laughs> See, you was taught that, listen, you can't tell your kid to shut up anymore. So I, I, I turned it around spiritually. Be still and know I'm about to get hold of you. Okay? And Mama says, oh, you're breaking my heart. You're, I lay awake at night. Well, listen, while she's laying awake and she's stressed and all that, Dad over there, he's snoring. Dad's asleep. Because you know what dad says? In the morning, me and the boy are going outside. I'm done. I am done. Mama, just keep on crying. I love you. I love you. He's like, yeah, just keep on. Come on, somebody. We got to get authority back in the family. We got to get dads back in the family. I'm not talking about males in the family out there making babies. Come on, I'm going to be real this morning. I'm talking about a dad that will raise the children in the way of the Lord. And when they don't want to go to church, is understand this right here. It is not an option. You are going to church. Well, I don't have to like it, no. But understand this right here. You're going to hear, amen, the word of God. You're going to get something yeah. inside of you, amen. amen. Hallelujah. I heard this all my life, and I always wondered this. And you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. I told my dad this. I said, no, I can't make it drink, but I'll hold its head under so long it'll suck up something. <laughs> Come on, somebody. My child may not want to hear the word of God, but understand this right here. When they leave, they're going to leave with some word. Yeah. They're going to leave, amen, knowing that, listen, authority is coming to your house, so you might as well get ready. Yeah. Go ahead and change your attitude here. Don't take it over there, amen. Why? Because the, the parents heard that discipline has to come back to the house of God. Yeah. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 11. Even a child is known by his doing. Whether his work be pure and whether it be right. It's a yeah. What you just did, was that good? Uh, what you're saying, is that good? Who you're hanging with, is that good? All this right here. Good is only of God. You, what you say is good may not be good because it may not be God's good. Amen? And so what happens is we have young people, you ask them this question right here. Do you really like where you're at right now? Do you really like what you're doing right now? Do you really like what you're doing on your phone? All these uh, sites out here and everything else. Are you so depressed right now because they've been cyberbullying you and now you're thinking about taking, you know, and putting a rope over the ceiling fan, put it around your neck and jump off a chair? Is that what you're really thinking about? Depression comes through rebellion. Come on, church. This is the day the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and I will be glad. Amen. I have to make a conscious decision as to whether I'm going to find joy in today. Whether I'm going to find peace in today. Whether I'm going to find, amen, authority in today. And so with this right here, I choose whether I have a good day or a bad day. I choose whether I have a good life or a bad life. I choose, amen, whether I walk in sickness or I walk in hell. Why is that? Because God gave us choices, amen. And when we make those choices, then what happens? happens is, amen, we begin to see results. If you don't like the results, amen, that you're seeing in your life, then make a change. I'm serious. I went to the doctor.
was just for my hip replacement. Mm -hmm. And this is what he told me, he said, you got to lose some weight, boy. <laughs> I said, oh, my God. Amen. So much for the German chocolate cake and ice cream and my Pringles and my Snicker bars. And, so Come on, I'm a junk food junkie. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And so I said, okay, I have to lose some weight. And I said, uh, and this is what he said, because all I can do is I can go ahead and do the surgery. I can do everything right. He said, but if you are not willing, he said, to hold to the plan, you can destroy what it is I'm fixing. That's right. That's right. That's right. So I said, okay, let's get on it. Come on. Come on. How many know the minute that you begin to say the word diet, in great big letters, there's a big golden arch. That's right. And there's the Burger King. That's right. Wendy's called, hey, Dave. And I'm saying, my God, I... I just said diet. I didn't say I was actually doing it yet. I'm driving down through Copper's Cove, and I'm hearing all these voices coming in. I said, oh, my God. So I kept driving. Come on. I said, I'm not going to stop. i got to keep going. And I remember this right here. My mother told me, she said, son, remember, what you put in your mouth, will, uh, he said, she said, well, either heal you or kill you. I said, oh, my God. I want it. Come on. We got too many people there dying because they they will not take and correct a man. Uh, their eating habits they won't correct a man. Their spending habits they won't correct. Uh, you know, get into some exercise and everything else. I, I, I told him I said some of the most exercise that you get cardio is just lifting that cup of coffee every morning doing curls like this right here. You know, and I said you got to stop it. Yeah, that's right. So the next time I went through a little depression, every time I was seeing. Oh, dumb nuts. Oh, dumb nuts. I'm like, come on, somebody. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. That bologna sandwich. Put mayo on there. Them sandwich sliced pickles on there. Fresh tomato on there. A little bit of lettuce on there. Woo! I closed the refrigerator door. I said, shut up. My dogs are looking at me. I'm serious, I'm being real. My dogs are looking at me because when I make a bologna sandwich, they get bologna. Yeah. Well, guess what? My dogs have lost weight too. Yeah. I go in the kitchen to get me a cup of coffee and they're following me like, bologna! And I'm like, no, we're on diet. But how many know it's hard? I went from 226 pounds, I'm down now to 200 pounds. Hallelujah. I feel better. I still got some more to lose, but I feel better. Oh, that's why no, no, I didn't show that. Amen. But how many know we got to teach our children also? Listen to this right here. We got to teach our children how to be healthy. You know that in America that our children are the most obese in all of the world? You're feeding them chicken that has got steroids in it. They walk around like little Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, they're only five years old. Come on. Doctor says, hey, listen, at this rate, they'll be dead by the time they're 12. Yes. Yeah, but they like chicken. Yeah. Okay, let's move on. Y'all throwing darts at me, man. All right, come on, amen. Proverbs 23, 22, hearken unto thy father that begot you and despise not your mother when she is old. You know why he said that? Because they got wisdom. Because they've been across those bridges of despair. They've been in the fields of agony. They've gone through all of this right here. And what they're saying is, listen, don't follow my footprints because it's a hard way to go. Well, they don't know anything, you know. How many know this right here? When a young person, amen, from the age, I would say from the age now, it's even lower, from the age of seven up to about 22, their parents are the dumbest people on the earth. Because if you don't believe it, ask them. Just ask them. But then all of a sudden they wake up one day when they got children, they're going, wow, my parents were smart. Yes. Yes. Come on. I, I did not have to go down that same road. I didn't have to, amen, I didn't have to go down that. And we look at this right here and we follow a pattern. I know this is going to get touchy. But do you know that if your parents were divorced, that there is a 90% chance you will be divorced? Come on, man. Do you know that if your dad was abusive to your mother, that 
More likely you are going to marry a man that's going to be abusive to you because he resembles your father. This is what I'm saying. So what happens is you come to the place to say, no, uh, we gotta, we got to cut this, amen. Those ties got to be cut. I'm not going down that same path. I'm not going to that abusive relationship. I'm not going down there with alcohol. I've seen what it does. I'm not going down there with drugs. I'm not going down there with this right here. I've seen what it has done, and I'm going to take the other road. Yes, sir. Come on. See, wisdom says to learn from somebody else's failures and do not repeat it yourself. That's wisdom. That's foundation. Yes. Amen. I don't want to go through the same thing that my my biological father went through. No. He was very abusive. Yes. He he was an alcoholic. Yes. And so there was no family value there. Yes, sir. So when I when I got married and, and we had kids and everything else, I said, I want to be everything he wasn't. I don't want to be an alcoholic. I don't want to be abusive. I want to make sure that my children are raised right. I want to make sure in all this right here that our family, amen, that we are all in church together. We all sit together, amen. And, and I made sure with this right here that it came time that I even begin to train my children. Amen. Every one of my kids knew what it was like to go hunting. I took them out with weapons. I took them out and showed them the effects of it and, and how to properly uh, how to properly uh, maintain them and use them and, and 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 watch this right here. They grew up knowing this right here that if you pick up a weapon, it's a dangerous piece of equipment. You never pick up a weapon if it's loaded and not on safety. You never point it at somebody. You either point it up or you point it straight down. And so I taught them that. Never had a problem. Also tell them this right here. You better be respectful in school. Come on now. First day of school. God's my witness. First day of school, I went to each one of their teachers. I said, my children are under authority. Your authority. I said, if they do not obey the rules of the school, if they do not obey what you are telling them, you are to immediately call me. I will be down here. And my child standing right there. Didn't have no problem. I never got a call. You know why? Because I told him right off. If your teacher calls me, I have to leave my job. And I was in the military. I said to come down to this school. It's not going to be pretty. Come on, somebody. But we find out that kind of authority it doesn't exist anymore. We find out parents come down, and what they want to do is come down, their child's a victim, and the teacher's a problem. They come down here, and all of a sudden, no, listen, I wouldn't do anything. And the parents are like, well, you know, my little boy would never do this. I understand this right here. You don't know who you're talking about. Amen. Yeah. Not Let me tell you what the Word of God says right here. Listen to your father that begot you. And despise not your mother when she's old. Don't take advantage of your parents in their senior years. Amen. Amen. Shh. Don't do it. Don't do it. Abuse to seniors? Can that be prosecuted? We got ones that right now go in and threaten grandma, amen, for her social security. Come on. Come on. We got ones right now that, listen, they can leave their parents sitting on the sidewalk broke as long as the kids got what they wanted. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's in their latter years. I've seen this so many times. And the reason I see this is because rebellion was never dealt with. And so unless we begin to deal with rebellion, then we have to live with it. That's written right now that in our government, all the way through Congress and all the way through Senate and all this right here, we find out rebellion is standing up, coming against, amen, the principles of God's word. They want to turn around and, and they want to bring in transgender. They want to bring in same-sex marriage. They want to bring in homosexuality. They want to bring in abortion. They want to bring in all this right here. And they're saying, and if you don't agree with us, you're a bunch of racists. You're a bunch of haters. But understand this right here. I'm not Velcro. You can put all your labels out there. They're not going to stick to me. I'm not Velcro, amen. I'm not holding on to them. And I will still tell you the truth, amen, that life in the womb of a mother, I don't care, amen, if it's a weekend date or whatever it was, it's precious in the eyes of the Lord. He's the authority. That's right. Wow. That's what we believe. You'll find out that many times in the family there's division, especially when you're a Christian. Anybody here? Oh, yeah. 
I stand for life. Thank God that my mother did not have an abortion. Come on, somebody. That's what reason you're here. Yes, sir. But isn't it some of the ones, amen, that weren't aborted are the ones that don't care if the others get aborted? Yes. I'm just going to be real this morning, amen. In church, I've heard one say, well, you know, if the mother wants, I said, understand this right here. You're on the side of the enemy. And if you're siding with death of a young one, understand this right here. God will judge you. Amen. Amen. we got to get authority back. Yes, well, you know, if two guys want to hook up, do whatever and all that, you know, as long as it doesn't bother me, understand this right here. It is an abomination unto the Lord, and you can't witness somebody's salvation, amen, when they're over here believing that homosexuality is accepted by God. Yes, yes sir. And that's what they're trying to put out. No, you can't. Well, you know, I don't, want, I don't want to stir up the pot. No, I want to empty the pot. Empty it. Come on. I want to empty it. Hallelujah. And so that's the reason why I said I gotta get in this. We gotta we gotta get this word out. We gotta start it. Amen. When we're driving by a school, amen, I do a prayer drive by. Amen. You know you got all these drive by shooters. I do a prayer drive by. I just pray as I'm going over it, amen. I'm praying against evil minds. I'm praying against amen. Drive by shooters. I'm praying against right now drugs. I'm praying and, come on. I begin to name them demons. That homosexual demon. I, I begin to name this right here. And I begin to that murdering demon. And God, if there's a young kid that has brought a he's brought his gun to school or you know whatever, have somebody, amen, have the courage to go and report it. Happened right here in Colleen. Yes, it did. Happened right here in Colleen. Young man comes to school. He brings his Glock. Nine mil. Probably got 12 rounds in it. He's telling his, he telling his, his boys, he said, hey, listen, I'm going to shoot this school up. I got this. I got that. I'm going to do this. One of them. One of them. <laughs> One of them. <laughs> Goes and says, hey, you better check on him. Come on, man. You better check on him because what he's saying is going to take life. What he's saying right here. And so they went and they checked. They found the, they found the weapon and everything. But watch this right here. This one that stood up and he said, I've got to make a difference, amen. I'm not going to just back up and let this thing go. He said, I'm going to make a difference. There's no telling how many lives he saved. Amen. Yes. Well, I just don't want to get involved, you know. Yeah. Understand this right here. You're already involved. You're already involved, church. You're already involved. And teach your grandchildren. I'm looking at most of you here. Teach your grandchildren to, if they see something, say something. Oh, I can't be a snitch. Well, understand this right here. You may not be a snitch, but whoever's out here doing this, they may be the one that takes your life. Come on, somebody. Talk to their mama. Hey, do you know this is going on right here? Do you know this is happening right here? Do you know that's happening right there? You, you know, I'm not coming here accusing you, but what I'm saying is you need to check your house. You need to see who's coming in your house. You need to see what they're bringing in your house. Amen. Be like Joshua. As far as for me and my house, amen, we're going to serve the Lord. You're not bringing that trash into my house. My house is not your garbage can. I don't know. I ain't never heard no preacher like that. I understand this right here. I want, I want to see our youth live. I want to see them not just survive. I want to see them thrive. I want to see them, amen, as all of a sudden they're going to the best college, receiving the best truthful information and coming forth, amen, to change this nation so that once again we become one nation under God. And once again we come to the altar of repentance and this nation begins to rise up and they will say it is a city set on a hill, amen, that we can have other nations that will want to come here because they said we want the freedom to worship God. We want to be able to come here. We ran from Hamas. We ran from Hezbollah. Yes, but then we got to the United States and there was Hamas. There was Hezbollah. Yes. We looked over here yes. and guess what? We saw over here the white supremacists. We looked over here and we saw these over here. And, and then all of a sudden they went, man, it was, this country is no different than what I just came from. It's because we took authority out of the family. And all the amen, jumping, shouting, running up. That's not going to change your family. Yes, sir. What changes your family is you changing yes. and saying today is a new day. Yes, when you draw the line, don't move back. Right. Don't God. give up. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me give you a couple more scriptures right here. Word, 
Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1. Remember now thy creator in the days of your youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when you shall say, I have no pleasure in them. You know what he said? How many of you, thinking about this right here, how many of you really enjoy society today? Think about it. How many of you really feel safe and comfortable and, you know, hey, I was at the mall yesterday with my granddaughter and my great-granddaughters. Uh, we were at the mall, and I'm looking around. And I can't, I can't enjoy because I'm constantly looking. Wow. Wow. I'm constantly surveying. Yes, I'm constantly yeah. wondering, is this going to turn into a oh, bad yeah. event? I'm looking around, and yeah. all of a sudden I hear a, a loud commotion, and I see that, hey, there's a crew over here, a crew over here, and they all of a sudden they start kind of uh, going against his mouth and each other and everything else, and I'm thinking, this could turn bad real fast. Oh, yeah. And I'm telling my, I tell my granddad, I think it's time for us to leave. Oh, that's true. I think it's time to leave. Because when I walked in the mall, listen to this. When I walked in the mall, there's a sign that says, no handguns are allowed. <laughs> Even if you, amen, legally can carry and everything, you cannot bring it in the mall. What does that tell somebody that wants to go in there and shoot the place up? What does it tell somebody that's evil says, hey, listen, you can go have yourself a wonderful time in here because there are nobody carrying in here. Yes. Yes, that's what they're saying. Isn't that something? And these are young, these are, I'm talking, I'm talking in the mall, I'm talking probably between 15, 17, 19 years old, just hanging out. Yeah. Just hanging out. Yeah. Ain't got no money. <laughs> Not unless he got mama's credit card. Hello. And grandma's social security. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Just hanging out. All it takes is one, one threat to disrupt into violence. We gotta teach our children better than this. Yes, There's got to be authority. I had a parent tell me one day, said, Well, you know, the reason my children don't come to church is if they don't want to go, I don't make them. I said, but what if they want to go down and join a crew? What if they want to go down here to the bar? What if they want to go out here and, and they want to do drugs? Are you going to tell them it's okay? You just do whatever you want. And maybe when you get old enough, you'll, you'll change your mind if you make it that long. No, it never happens. No. No. They stay out there. we got to get them back. Yes. And church, I'm telling you, church. our grandchildren today, if we as grandparents don't do something, they're lost. They're lost. We got society, AI, artificial intelligence. It is now, amen, listen, it is now a dating site, and there are ones that are dating AI. These robots, and, and they're in love with them. This is a, I'm like, you, you drinking the Kool-Aid. Come on, somebody. You met the man on the sidewalk that's selling stupid pills and you got a whole case of them. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I just want to say I love you. I love you too. I'm thinking this is weird. Come on, somebody. You don't even have to be saved to say, hey, come on now. This is weird. And young people today are now having relationships with these, these robots and everything, which is now bringing them into, watch this right here, is bringing them into the place of confusion, is bringing them into the place of suicide, is bringing them into the place of drugs, is bringing them into the place of sex slavery. Why? Because I'm saying that the enemy knows how to use that to get your child out of your house and get them out there and abuse them. I love our children. I love them. That's right. Come on. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 1. Children, obey. That's a bad word. Oh, oh my. Oh, yeah. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. What he said was if, if your parents are rebellious, don't follow them. In the Lord. Amen. Come on. Come on. You know, and I'm going to say this today. The reason that racism today 
lives it because it's been passed on through the parents. If I see a child that's racist, all I gotta do is fall on home and I know why. Yes. Amen. If it's not stopped in the house, yep. then understand this right here. It will be developed by the community. Yeah. That's the reason we're seeing that. Amen. And I've said this right here. Every one of us here, we all, amen, we all come through the blood of, of Adam. Yeah. And it means this right here, amen, that there's not one here that's any better or any less than anybody else. It means this right here, that we as humans, amen, have been created in the image of God. So we need to be proud of who we are, but we need to respect others as who God created them to be. Amen. There should be no ism and schism in the house of God, amen, as we are children of God. Whosoever loveth wisdom rejoices his father. But he that keepeth company with harmless spendeth his substance. You know what he said? Listen, where's your money? Where's it going? Where's it going? Mm, I don't know. I'm not just going to raise your hand, but think about this. When's the last time that the church begin to teach on finances. When's the last time the church began to teach on budgeting? Yes, sir. When's the last time the church said, hey, if you haven't got it, don't spend it? Debt, credit card debt, credit card debt. The United States right now is floundering in all of this debt. Our government is giving out all of this money right now. Oh, students, listen, we're going to go ahead and just make it easy for you. You go out there to college, get in a swimming class, we're going to pay you all your... No, come on, somebody. We want to make sure that with this right here, that listen, it's a hard life. Would we lose somebody over there? No. Oh. All right. That's all right. Correction will be later. Amen. <laughs> But no, we, we see this right here where we want to make sure, amen, that life can be a whole lot better when we line up with the Word of God. A fool and his money are soon departed. Well, you know, you can play the lottery and can't even pay your bills. Come on. I went to pay for some gas. The woman, the individual in there, I had to stand there a good probably three to five minutes. Why? She had so many scratch-offs in there. And I said, excuse me, I need to pay for this. Now, can't you see I'm busy? I said, well, if you're busy another two minutes, you want to pay for my gas because I'm leaving. <laughs> oh, well, here I am. <laughs> but listen, that society we live in today. Oh, Lord, I need it. Shake it up, shake it up. No, that's a good job. Come on. Come on. When my kids got old enough that they could tell me what to do, I told them, go get a job, get your own money, get your own house, pay for your own food, all your own bills. I'm not going to tell you how to live, but I'm going to tell you as long as you're in my house. Amen. Come on, do I have any parents here? Any grandparents? As long as you're in my house, I don't care if it's my children, my grandchildren, my great grandchildren. If you're in my house, amen, I will tell you. You, amen. What to do? I'm going to tell you that you need to respect your elders. I need to earn it or demand it. Hallelujah. We need to have another leadership. Come on, with me this morning. When Jesus made his ride into Jerusalem, and there were children out there, and they were praising him. They were just hailing him, all hell, King Jesus. You know, son of David, they were just, they had been taught, amen, how to praise. They had been taught how to worship. But the ones that got so angry were the religious leaders. Tell these kids to be quiet. Understand this right here. When kids are in the, in the church in here, in the sanctuary, and you see one of them getting out and start dancing, leave them alone. Let them dance. Let them get out here and clap their hands. Let them run around a little bit. You know why? Because God is saying, that's praise. That's worship. That right there is real, amen. They, they have not yet been, they have not yet been polluted. Amen. That's right. And they enjoy it. 
here for whosoever will. Children, young people are invited. But understand this right here. We'll never take and, and shy from the truth, amen, just to make you comfortable. Amen. We want them to know that there is a way that seems right unto an individual, but the end thereof is sudden destruction. Amen. Father, this morning, I know that, Lord God, that as you have spoken unto my spirit, Lord God, that our youth today in America, that, Lord God, that right now they have no boundaries. That right now, that Lord God, they do not respect authority. We see that today, Lord God, that the murder on the streets and youth shooting youth. That, Lord God, they don't even make it to their 21st birthday. That, Lord God, they don't begin to even experience, Lord God, the, the value that you placed in them. The, the, the gifts that you placed in them. That, Lord God, that they can be such an asset. That, Lord God, there's one that can be uh, uh, responsible for inventions. They can, Lord God, can change the life of man. And, Lord God, that they don't get a chance because their blood is flowing on a concrete. It's out there, Lord God. And I just pray that we will... We will begin to, Lord God, see this as more than serious. We're going to see this as an epidemic. We're going to see that, Lord God, a nation whose nation is not the Lord is a nation that's doomed for destruction. But a nation whose nation, this nation whose God is, amen, the Lord, we find victory. We find honor. We find that, Lord God, that we are able to take and find the true joy. Not artificial, true joy that we can worship and praise you. So this morning, I pray that, Lord God, we're going to rise up. We're going to dare to be different. Then, Lord God, when we are uh, presented with a question, we're going to give the truthful answer. It may not be what they want to hear. They may say, well, hey, I don't believe in that. But tell me, I said to Juan, what is the truth? What is the truth? And they couldn't explain it. I said, what have you been told? And they begin to tell me what they've been told, Lord. But it was not the truth. It was not according to your word. It was not according to the standards that have existed through time. And Lord God, I thank you that our desire is to bring them into knowing that God, if you said it, you meant it. And that we are the voice of heaven this morning, each and every one of you. Right now, you are ambassadors of the kingdom of God. Only thing you say is what God says. The only thing you give them is what the word says. Because it's not what you think or what you say. It is what the commander and chief Jesus Christ has given unto you. And you are his representative. So say what he said. Be what he's called you to be. Rejoice in him. And know that this is the day that the Lord hath made. Come on, let's rejoice in it. And let's begin. Yeah, give him glory and honor and praise. Amen. Let's make a difference. Amen. And let's start with our own house.